Anyway, we have our um, our guest today that I talked about at the top of the episode. Jackson Palmer, founder of Dogecoin, is with us. As you guys know, Doge, Dogecoin has been Doge. kind of a big deal, you know. Uh, and it's been talked about the likes of like Elon Musk pumped it. It was like one of the biggest kind of cr- cash grabby uh, cryptos. I'm sure all of you guys heard about Dogecoin. And with us, uh, Jackson is with us. Hi, Jackson. Thanks for hey, calling. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Thanks for having me on. This is so cool to uh, speak with you about this. I appreciate the yeah. opportunity to talk with you about it. Yeah. So, um, first of all, let's just start from the top. Like, um, where did the idea for Dogecoin come from? Was it meant to be ironic from its inception? It seems like it. Yeah, I know <laughs> for sure. Um, it started in like 2013. I was like a lot of people like, what the heck is this, this crypto nonsense? Mm. And uh, there was every day there was like something else coin. And so I just tweeted one day, like, uh, I'm going to invest in Dogecoin. It's the next big thing, kind of just <laughs> pulling it out of thin air. I think I'd had a couple of beers at the time. Um, and I bought Dogecoin.com and was like, oh, it's a parody cryptocurrency. Um, and so it was really a joke to make fun of it. But then, um, you know, a week later, uh, my now co-founder who created it with me reached out and was like oh we should we could make it a real thing we could put it put the dog logo on on top of bitcoin and you know just to kind of continue the joke and i was like sure um and so it really did start out as this kind of really lighthearted, just kind of way to poke fun at crypto i've always had a very skeptical kind of opinion of crypto but then as you all know it kind of uh got out of hand a little bit <laughs> so did you guys actually put a i i don't did you guys put a lot of work into creating Dogecoin? Is that a lot no. of... No, it's not. No, it, it was probably like four hours tops. That's work. it? Wow. Yeah. So how does it work, though? Because you have to connect it to some kind of... Uh, doesn't it need the process, and you have to have code and all this shit? I don't know how it works. Yeah, but it, it, you can basically do a find and replace in like the Bitcoin source code and just oh. change it to Dogecoin, and then you change a few numbers... You know, you change the font to Comic Sans and you put a dog on it and that's, that's it. So that's incredible. It wasn't a lot of work. And and realistically, both of us, um, you know, who were both kind of skeptical. He, I think he's a little less skeptical of crypto these days. But um, we both thought it would, like, be a joke for, like, a week and everybody would forget about it collectively. But So, um, yeah, I mean, there was the Doge meme was really popular then with that, like, goofy dog. And yeah. uh, it was, I remember seeing it on Reddit and everyone was just loving the meme of it. And it was kind of weird because it disappeared for a while and then it came back like in a huge way. Is that kind of what happened? Like if I pull up the chart. Yeah. Uh, here, let's pull up the chart of it. Let's see. If I go yeah, to. Yeah, it, it was, um, there, there was kind of like a big wave, like that first crypto wave, like 2014. Yeah, I mean, it was um, flat, basically, until all of a sudden in 2021, in February. Dude, it yeah. shot up to freaking, that was so nuts. It shot up to almost a dollar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like, crypto kind of goes in these cycles where like, it's the same kind of, it's the same grift. It's just a different kind of angle every every couple of years. And so it was like... First, it was like, oh, we're going to replace the banks. And then a few years later, it's like ICOs was the big thing. And then, you know, more recently, it's been around some of like there was meme stocks and DeFi and NFTs and, and, and stuff like that. And I think that combined with the the like Elon effect mm-hmm. um, just like shot it up. But yeah, I haven't been actively involved in it since like 2014. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah. So it doesn't require any maintenance, basically from from the two of you who who founded it it's just I don't, lives neither, by neither of us are involved in it anymore like he's kind of i guess uh more of a the face of it i would say like mm-hmm. he interacts with elon and stuff more but i um i very quickly like after the joke got out of hand kind of realized like who the the community of people in crypto were and um tried my best to like educate people for a while around like the technology and the pitfalls of it. But then I realized that nobody really cared about that. They just <laughs> cared about making a buck. And so, yeah. So just to give you guys an idea of how insane Dogecoin got market cap right now. And it's kind of like the lowest it's been since January. It's at 11 billion, dude. That's insane. That's so crazy from the stupid. 
from this goofy joke you guys did. Can you did. explain what does this even mean to um, mean, dummies like me? It means that people who own Bitcoin, there's eleven billion dollars basically oh, of, pe- of real money, like in the pool of yeah. Kind of, kind of. Like I, I should just say, like when you look at those market caps, they're all really inflated because mm. what it means is like it's the total supply that exists of that thing multiplied by what people would currently pay for it right now. Mm. Oh, I see. But the reality is, and we've seen this all the time, is that the second somebody loses faith and starts selling, then very quickly the price will drop off and the mm-hmm. market cap will shrink. So it's not real money. Like when you say that something's got like a hundred billion dollar market mm. cap, it's Actually, no, like that's assuming everybody would pay what it's worth right now, mm. not if everybody started running for the doors because the thing was crashing. Got it. So basically, you created Dogecoin and it quickly got out of hand. What was your reaction to like, I mean, so people started investing in it, but I think like around January 21, is that when Elon Musk started tweeting about it or like what caused that first influx? Yeah. Um, well, it, it was pretty big as well. Like even back in the day in 2014, it was still like, you know, in the top right, 10 cryptos. Right. I, I um, see, yeah. So it, it was pretty big and there was, you know, scandals and hacks and all of that. And, you know, my co-founder and I, we never kept any of it for ourselves. So we were kind of, oh, so yeah. we didn't have a, a financial incentive, you know, because it was a joke, right? You didn't, um, you never invested in Dogecoin. No. <laughs> you could have made so much money. Do you care about that? Not really. Because if um, you put like if you put like you know a hundred bucks into Dogecoin when you made it, that would have been worth a lot, mm, right? Yeah, it's one of those things where like I don't know. I, I feel like I'd have a really messed up opinion of the world if if I was like you know on a private jet because of a dog on a coin. So <laughs> I'm, right. I'm totally okay with not that not that being the case. True. But um, no, it, it was big for a while. Then there was scams and stuff, and uh, I did a YouTube channel for a while with crypto and stuff, and then just completely wiped my hand of crypto in like 2019. And then in the latest kind of run up in like 21 with NFTs and stuff. When all that game stop stock stuff, game stonks happened, yeah. um, I think uh, Elon and um, specifically there's a person that works for Elon who like manages his whole like all of his money for him. Um, I think got pretty involved. Um, I was I don't know the specifics because I wasn't there, but he just started like hammering tweets about it, and then that just like shot mm-hmm. it up. So you think what happened behind the scenes is he his, he's like saw it as an opportunity to make easy money and just bought a shitload and then started tweeting about it? I don't know. Like I, I can't I'm not gonna I can't speculate, but um it it's well I can speculate, but I, I don't know <laughs> certainly. Well that would I be think, a really easy way to make a bunch of money, wouldn't it? It would be, but like does he need the money? So like, you know, the the thing the thing with with, with him, I know you're you're talking about him a little bit later, is that um I think ego matters to him more than money. And Mm. so I think the cool thing for him about like tweeting about crypto stuff is that it helps him kind of expand his like cult of personality, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that are like totally on the the Elon train now purely because he's like pumped their crypto. And yeah, I I don't know if it's so much about like him making like an extra buck off of any kind of crypto token so much as it is him building like a digital army of people who will like fight to the death because they think he's Tony Stark or something, you know? Well, what's interesting about like the anecdote anyway is like if he did that where he bought a bunch of Dogecoin and then started tweeting about it and the price went up like, you know, 10,000%, that wouldn't be illegal, would it? I see. That's the thing, right? Like right. that. That's the thing with cryptocurrency, right? Um, it's that you know I've been in it for almost a decade now, and I, I I kind of believe, and I posted this on Twitter last year that I think crypto is is kind of it exists as a way to help people um, kind of commit shady, do some do some <laughs> shady shit, and uh, kind of shirk the responsibility of that because there's no like it's a, it's a legal gray area or the regulation just doesn't happen to exist or you know um so yeah i think in it, like if he did that with tesla stock he'd be in a little bit exactly. of trouble or any other stock but i think with crypto he can you know people can get away with that anybody can so let me go back a little bit so when you made this did you what was your early skepticism of crypto basically it started off this? as um 
it started off as just like when there's when everybody's talking about something and a lot of people that aren't very technical are talking about something that involves cryptography you know i was kind of like mm, this this feels like a little bit of a bubble mm. and so it was more of a a general criticism of that and at first i tried to give it kind of the benefit of the doubt and you know back in the day there was actually some 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 people that i kind of aligned with more politically like some occupy people that were involved in things like that and i was like oh okay maybe this is some cool people that actually want to you know uh change you know power structures in the world but um then as i was in it for more and more years i just realized i was like oh no like <laughs> this is this is not those people those people slowly got out of it and um it increasingly just became you know the people that came from like the online gambling world or mm -hmm. you know the the super like right libertarian folks who you know um want to create some kind of you know libertarian utopia on an island or something you know and, and and i was like oh like i see what this is actually about uh now and so my my criticism kind of i guess honed in um after i was in it for a bit and so basically um as you started seeing a lot of gambling and kind of people who just want to hide money basically from the government so i've seen you have really skate i, I read what you wrote on twitter and it was mm -hmm. really incredible i thought and really and just pointed, right? Like really direct. Um, was yeah. there was there a point somewhere where you're just like, this thing is just irredeemably fucked? There was, yeah. Like so, for the the, the longest time, I was like, you know, all these terrible people might be involved, but um, at the end of the day, it's technology, and you know, technology can be neutral, right? Um, and I think when I got really deep into it in like 2018 with my YouTube channel and I went deep into the technicals of this stuff, what I quickly realized is that um, not only is the, the promotion and the hype, you know, kind of a grift, but also the technology itself is fundamentally flawed. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very centralized at like every layer of, of the equation. And, you know, like whether it's people that are using like custodial wallets like Coinbase or MetaMask, which like, you know, one company is deploying into like Chrome browsers or whether it's people that are using like OpenSea.com, which is a centralized website um, or even the blockchain, which is like powered by like a small number of Bitcoin miners. And, you know, there's, you know, huge centralization of the you know people that own all the money on those things like the the decentralization is really a facade. It's not real. And the technology can't really support a lot of what they claim it can. Uh, you know, but if you say it enough, people will start to believe that something is true, right? Um, and so the decentralization is really a lie. And it's only useful to the promoters of the technology in being a really convenient facade that they can kind of you know, make it harder to get caught for the shady stuff they're doing. Because they could say, well, you know, like I, I didn't manipulate it, it's, it's decentralized. Um, and, and a lot of people turn a blind eye to that. Yeah, because I think a lot of the enthusiasm for crypto in the beginning, it was championed as like this new, uh, this new monetary system outside the traditional system. And it was returning yeah. power to the mm -hmm. people, right? Yeah. And now we had control and everything was transparent. Um, Anti, like, the bank, right? Anti-establishment, fuck mm -hmm. the bank. Uh, you know, the few rich powerful can no longer control our money. That's mm -hmm. not happened, has it? No, no. And it's it, it's interesting, like I was saying earlier, that every few years they have to change, like, the the pitch because they mm -hmm. they realize what they were, everybody's kind of cottoned on to what they were saying, you know? So, like, it used to be like, yeah, fight the power and it'll replace banks. And then they realized, oh, no, it doesn't scale. It can't actually be a currency. Uh, it's, it's like digital gold. That's the next thing we'll say. It's like a mm -hmm. store of value. It's an investment, you know? And then they realized that actually it can drop half its value overnight. That's not like <laughs> gold, right? So then like, oh, actually, it's an ICO crowdfunding platform. It's, it's way better than, than Kickstarter. Wait, what's ICO? ICO was like initial coin offerings that happened in like 2017. It was kind of like Kickstarter, oh, oh, but, but you know, and there was a lot of fraud there. Um, but, but my point is that every oh, few years they change and uh, they try to um, come up with a new pitch of, of, you know, this thing is going to democratize this. It's going to be great for the average Joe, right? And what they're really doing is just lining up a new batch of suckers who will put their money in um, so and, who, and hand it over. Say, and to your point about like, 
the the Wall Street thing. Like, if it was really about that, then you wouldn't see Wall Street and venture capitalists so so invested. They, as they love are, it. Right? I've noticed that these guys love crypto. Why do you think these Wall Street guys and these huge investment bankers and banks, just banks, love crypto so much? Um, I, I like. I think it's because well. I think it's mostly because it, it exists in a world that isn't as regulated as the world mm -hmm. that they have in increasingly had to deal with in the last 30 years, right? So the SEC has cracked down, you know, since the dot-com uh, boom and then the, and then the recession. Um, you, you can't do a lot of this manipulation. You can't have a lot of these kind of back, uh, back room kind of dealings in, 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 uh, with publicly traded companies and uh, or even, even privately traded companies. But... With the blockchain, you can kind of brush it all away and say, well, it's all decentralized. Like, I don't actually control that. It's in the ether somewhere. And so you can't catch me. And, and realistically, like, regulators are, like, asleep at the wheel. Like, the fact that a lot of the, um, you know, scams have to be exposed by citizen journalists like CoffeeZilla on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, Molly Wyatt, who runs Web3IsGoingGreat.com. Like, if the system was working, then, you know, those people would be getting outed by the actual regula regulatory bodies, but instead average people have to do it. So to me, that that's why venture capitalists love it because they're like, this is great. This is and the there's no West. accountability. I mean, like CoffeeZilla, yeah. you mentioned, he like there's actual straight up fraud being committed by influencers here who are well-respected people in the community committing yeah. huge acts of fraud uh, of millions of dollars. And even after they're totally exposed, there's literally no, there's no authoritative agency stepping in to, to, to adjudicate yeah. it. Like there's no accountability even after it's been exposed. It, it, there, there's absolutely no consequences. And so that's like why, you know, people ask me why this stuff is so rife. And I'm like, it's because there are literally no consequences to, you know, all the stuff that happened with like FaZe Clan and, you know, or, like every day there's a new thing yeah nobody ever gets in trouble yeah. and mm -hmm. i think that you know we've entered a really interesting phase like where it there's a kind of moral nihilism that i think yeah. is happening mm -hmm. where people like don't care anymore about, even the, that's about what i see asking. a lot like i'm thinking like even you guys are talking about how there's no repercussions or mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. it's like it's actually even beyond that they're seen as cool like they they're game. Smart. They're smarter than you. Yeah. They're gaming totally. the system, and you're behind. So you're you're Thank poor you. and stupid, and you should just like ad admire what's happening. That's so true, actually. That's. I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and the the difference that I've noticed in like you know, from back when Dogecoin was first created, when I used to tell people crypto is a pyramid scheme, it's a Ponzi scheme. This is like, this is really bad. They would often reply like, "Oh, that's just fud," you know, like yeah. you. You're, 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 you're making this up like you're wrong. They'd actually debate me. But now when I say, you know, crypto is a pyramid scheme, a lot of people actually respond, yeah, we know. <laughs> the whole world's a pyramid scheme actually. And oh. it's cool. It's so, as, long, so long as I'm making money out of it, I don't, great. Yeah. And that's just like, that's crazy to me. It's such a, a change in the way that people don't seem to care about the collective good anymore. Yeah. I think the problem is that like there's been an everything bubble where you can't really lose on investment for the past five years. So everybody's like, it's all good. Everyone's making money. What's the problem? Um, but that's I think that's going to change big time here. Everything's, you know, as we head to into a recession. Mm. But um, when you, you talked about how they are always making up a kind of a new angle to pitch crypto to a new batch of suckers. When you say they, is there people specifically that you think of who are like perpetuating this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot of, so a lot of the, the VCs that are a lot larger now started off as smaller VCs back in the day and were investing in companies like Coinbase, the Krakens, the, mm -hmm. you know, all the different exchanges. And the exchanges are really the only companies that still exist that existed back then because, you know, that's how you make money, right? You take a slice off the top of everybody mm -hmm. trading something. Um, you kind of can't lose. And so um, I think it's it's really a, a concerted effort by the exchanges and by uh, the, the investors that were behind those exchanges to come up with a new narrative mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in the exchange's best interest because if you 
if you encourage, get more people in, the exchanges make more money because the way they make money is transaction fees, like they take a slice off the top, right? And I think a good example of this is, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, on Coinbase, um, if you go in there, they actually have a whole system where they will pay you to sit and basically go through glorified ads <laughs> about like so-and-so token and this this other crappy token oh, wow. like and you'll get paid money um in that token by the way to <laughs> to essentially gamble it, it's a casino essentially and they're giving you some free money and and they love it because they 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 build that kind of gambling addiction up with this person under the guise of decentralized education and then they start taking a slice off the top of every trade that that person does right. as, as they become a day trader mm. um yeah so um i'm curious what do you think there's people like these financial self-help gurus like it seems like every single one of them is now in crypto yeah, and to them, it's a revolution. Every if you listen to Gary Vee, for example, uh, crypto is going to change the world. He's getting a crypto restaurant. He's doing these V friends, which I'm sure you've seen. Uh, he says cryptocurrency is going to be in video games. It's going to be in uh, uh, everything. Our licenses are going to be on crypto. Uh, everything. Our whole world is going to surround uh, 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 be surrounding crypto. What do you think about someone like Gary Vee? I, I think, yeah, he and a lot of these other financial YouTubers and people like that, um, shameless self-plug, I'm doing a, a podcast right now <laughs> called Griftonomics, and it's Love all that. about, you know, these different <laughs> topics. Name. And Love the name. <laughs> I'm interested in that. Yeah, the first episode was on Web3. Uh, <laughs> check it out. But um, I'm going to do an episode on, on these kind of people specifically mm -hmm. because years ago they, they were all about selling tickets to their kind of self-help conferences, right? And the that, that made a bit of money thing, for yeah. them. Um, and, and now they've all pivoted really quickly into like mm -hmm. NFTs, Web3, um, with a, a total disregard for any, like they don't understand the technology. I actually saw Gary Vee is running a conference today. Um, and uh, he got up and he was, he was saying, you, we're going to give you all fractional ownership in this NFT, which doesn't make any sense because mm -hmm. like non-fungible means it's not fractional. So <laughs> the, the guy is just, uh, you know, a, a grifter of, you know, the highest highest pedigree thank but. you for saying that because i've been saying that for years and people they love gary v they love him it, even it, here on this a personality i don't judge yeah. i don't judge the people that like him but i feel like he's such a grifter and it's great like this v friends thing's the most shameless cash grab it's i can't fucking believe what not i'm not to saying. mention it's like the ugliest art ever like <laughs> that, that's the everything. real thing that's right? when like, i anybody... get started it's like can we make it look better like what is all this <laughs> ugly stuff that everybody's buying and i'm not i'm not judging anyone that likes gary v i just think it's interesting because <laughs> listen i mean i guess the thing is gary v had us a whole shtick before crypto that i think people really liked uh, he makes out with his dad. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> That's an interesting thing, uh, but a separate issue. Um, but like, you should make I, an NFT of that. <laughs> <Right>. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but you know, uh, you know, it's just he. I saw him talking about how he's like, I made three million dollars in my sleep last night just from selling <laughs> V friends. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it just I, I seems think what like... it is, is he sells the, it's that cult of personality where you sell the, the, the dream that not only am I like, you know, I, Gary Vee, I'm, I'm a multimillionaire, but you could be too. Yeah. And I think that's what gets people really suckered into it. And I think it's the same with Elon. I think there's a lot of people out there that are huge Elon stands that think that, you know, by you know, spamming his replies they, that he might become friends with them and then maybe they'll be able to kind of, you know, be a, a rocket scientist or something. And, um, yeah, real culty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he just posts, he posts dumb memes and they like dumb memes. They're, they could be best buddies. <laughs> um, that's interesting. But do you think, like, Gary Vee's uh, crypto utopia, de like, decoupled from coins he's like we're going to be using the blockchain to govern everything in our life do you see the blockchain technology being anything interesting in that regard or is it just dumb i i think it's um years and years and years ago i i thought maybe it could have had legs as something but like i said when you when you actually like look under the covers and you look at at the technology you start to realize that it it just isn't 
created in a way that scales to the way that we would need to do governance as a society at a, at a mass scale. Like it works at the scale of like some scammer, like taking a few thousand people's money, but it doesn't scale up to like a place where you could run a country on it or, or anything like that. Um, and then you start to think about like the environmental concerns. A lot of these blockchains still haven't migrated away from proof of work. Right. It's hugely, hugely negative for the, the environment. But then even worse in my mind is, is that you're switching, you know, I think a lot of people as well that, that lean on the, on the political left as well would agree that it would be great to, to have, you know, less, less state control in some ways and, and have a breakaway in some sense. But to do that, you have to actually create a new system, which, which breaks away the power structures and the hierarchies that exist. But crypto doesn't do that. Not, That's the right, problem right, is what right. they've essentially done is just recreated a version of of the same system we have, but instead of the government being the boot, you're, you're now licking the boot of the venture capitalists, and they control all the power. So, and so, yeah, I don't think it, it. You know, that's not a world I want to live in. And I think um, th until there's a way that you can somehow, with some magic technology, prevent that from happening, I, I don't think that it has a real world use case. Mm -hmm. By the way, just remember, we actually did already make this an NFT. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, I know you're not interested in Web3 and stuff, but can you see that? Yes. Yeah, so this is Frenching Fathers. We actually made this, uh, God, a month or two ago. <laughs> and it is on the blockchain if anyone's interested. Um, is this oh available gosh. for purchase, Ian? I don't I uh, never so sold it. Yeah, maybe just put it up. I mean, this is <laughs> history. You now. Oh, it was never, it was never for actually offers. minted. It's just uh... actually, and what, can... what's interesting is we did it in the art style. We tried to emulate Gary Vee's <laughs> artistic uh, talents as well. Gorgeous. I, I will. Say, it looks nicer than Gary Vee's. Art <laughs> it is a little more technical. I think. <laughs> yeah. What love? Oh, it's just I saying. mean, it's, I think it's up. I, I think it technically... You... So nobody's bid on this thing? <laughs> oh, there's mel multiple bids, actually, if you scroll down. Uh, it gets minted when you sell it, pretty much, when you accept a offer. The best I offer we got was <laughs> 0 0.012. Is that ETH? Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, guys. This is this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. <laughs> Gary V sells this shit for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. This is way cooler. <laughs> yeah, so... um. So in short, I don't know. I mean, is it? Are we just basically waiting for an inevitable crash to zero? Is that where you think this is going? I don't know. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday, and I was like, "Is that the only way all of this ends?" Um, and maybe, but I, I, I've I've gotten out of the habit of predicting when things are going to implode because it. I do think there's a lot of people in power that are motivated to to keep on. Uh, keeping the train going and, mm. and and i sadly i think that that will often come in the way of, that that only affects the the people that are you know lower on the on the socioeconomic rung um they're the people that might lose millions of dollars because they bought a stupid v friend um you know they, they'll lose their 401ks because the bottom falls out of all of this um Meanwhile, do I think the venture capitalists will be lining up the next batch of people with whatever the next NFT craze is? Absolutely. And I, I think, I, I really don't think unless there's some, unless it really, really crashes or unless regulation comes in and, and the government actually kind of, you know, wake up and say, oh, this might be bad, that people mm -hmm. are losing their 401k so that um, it becomes an issue. I, I think there is a bit of, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for that in that the previous big crypto crashes we had before crypto wasn't as um, ingrained in some of traditional finance as it is today. And so back in like 2018, when there was a crash, you didn't have people with their 401ks invested. You didn't have people that had taken out, um, you know, mortgages on their homes to buy Bitcoin as, as to the level that you do today. And so it, I, a lot of people have actually hypothesized that a crypto crash might actually trigger a, a larger global uh, financial crash, um, and that would be really interesting to to see. Right, um, it would force it would terrible, force but. more scrutiny. But yeah, exactly. That could crypto. bring about more people being like, "Oh, wow, that was a problem." We have ha nobody's called it out except everybody did, you know. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I'm I'm surprised that the. I would have to assume that there's someone in the Fed who's putting together something, right? Like there's gotta be 
someone looking at this has been going on long enough. <laughs> I mean, just scam after scam after scam after scam after scam by huge people, people that peop that say, hey, you know, that guy is a, has a great reputation and we love him. He just fucking scams someone for millions of dollars. There's got to be someone looking at that, right? I, I would hope so. I honestly, my faith is a little shaken having been in it for the last 10 years and not seen a lot, a lot right, happen. So right. I think something will have to hit closer to home. Like maybe, maybe a lawmaker will have to lose money some way mm. through something they've invested in. Ted Cruz tanking. is going to lose all of his, <laughs> all of his Cancun coins or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Uh, to the moon. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite shit coin? What's your like? We have Safe Moon. That was a good one. We had uh, BitConnect. What's your favorite uh, scam or the craziest scam you've seen to date? Oh, you know what it was years ago, and I, I I'm always like a little hesitant to say this because I worry that I'm giving something like a platform, but may, I think it's dead enough now that I can talk about it. There was a coin in like 2017, 2018 called DentaCoin, and it was a cryptocurrency created purely to pay dentists in wow. <laughs> so it's like they got, <laughs> they got a bunch of these dentists I, I think they were all in florida which you know isn't super surprising together to and they said yeah all of our our dental agencies will we'll all start accepting this coin this is the coin for dentists wow oh and, my god uh, can you believe it didn't work out can you believe no, it's in the new shocking. global currency here's right? the dental coin website so they actually got dental people to sign up and they were accepting well, they said payment? they did i i didn't validate whether any dentists oh actually God, accepted so it but that's the that weirdest the thing i ever heard real and a feel god that is just so <laughs> bizarre how is that easier than just paying with dollars <laughs> yeah you tell me that's the case with all of it right i guess if you're like i only own bitcoin then you can buy Dentacoin. That's fucking weird, man. <laughs> That's so weird. What's Dentacoin worth today, I wonder? Hopefully not too much. Uh, total unlocked. There is... Good news, guys. <laughs> there is... Uh, what is this How number? I don't even read this. So this is million, billion. So there's 2.1 trillion Dentacoin unlocked out of a max supply of... Golly... <laughs> 7.3 <laughs> trillion. So there's plenty left to know. Yeah, actually, I, I, I have a root canal later. It's going <laughs> to cost me a uh, hundred billion dentical. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that, that's a good currency to use for that. I can't wait for the headline tomorrow. Dogecoin creator pumps dentical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally heavily invested. Dentical. Pump <laughs> dentical. Oh, this shit's going to the moon. <laughs> Well, thanks for calling. Thanks for sharing your story. Is there anything else you kind of want to leave the people with uh, who are wondering about crypto, who are thinking about crypto, who know people in crypto? I, I would just say, like, make sure you, you know, go out and, and think twice before somebody promises you something. Just because it's got some fancy acronyms next to it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's a worthwhile investment. And, uh, yeah, I, I uh, like I said, I'm doing that podcast, and if people want to follow it along, I'm gonna have some more stuff on on crypto and metaverse and all that. Plug kind of your stuff, stuff again. I'm actually gonna do something on. I know you and uh, Comrade Hassan were talking about <laughs> online gambling yesterday. Yeah, I'm gonna do an episode on that, like Twitch gambling and like the, the Drake whole situation. stake, the stake. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just all crypto. So shady. So shady. Really right? nuts. Yeah. So. Anyway, check it out if so, you're interested. Uh, give, it's Griftonomics.com. Give a sh give a yeah. Gr Griftonomics. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's just Griftonomics on Twitter as well. Griftonomics. Yeah. There you go. Follow. Uh, I'll I, throw it in the description. It sounds really interesting. Too. Yeah. Um, thank you to Jackson Palmer. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for calling in. It was really it was great really to hear from you. Griftonomics, people. Let's check it out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. There you have it. Jackson, the creator of Dogecoin, says crypto is a giant scam. It's nice to hear this kind of conversation. I feel like for some reason it doesn't make me feel stupid. Like I can follow and understand. No, you don't understand. It's revolutionizing the whole world. It's like the internet before, back when people thought that was crazy. <laughs> you don't understand. It's not just a Ponzi. Yo, you're in trouble. That crypto shit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but you know, so there you go. It's pretty incredible, man. If that guy, though, I know he, I know he thinks it's a scam, but if he put a thousand in the Doge when he made that, bro, he'd be like a hundred millionaire or something crazy. Mm -hmm. That's the only but reason he he's made talking a good shit. He's point. bitter. That's yeah, he's it. bitter. That's the only reason. He made a good point, though. If he would be flying on a private jet right now because of a Doge coin, what would his life be? He'd drink the Kool Aid. Yeah. He'd be like, yo, this he'd shit's be, crazy. He'd be, he'd be, no, you know what he'd be doing? He'd be asking the flight attendant if he can or buy a, a horse for a sexual <laughs> massage. Nice lead in, nice segue. <laughs> um, what an interesting story, you know? Interesting guy. Ah, uh, yeah, that crypto stuff is 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 kind of scary. I wonder if uh, Jimmy Lee accepts a Denta coin. <laughs> He's you know, missing out. That's a really good question. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask him. Yeah.